Maybe your desire to draw is there, but motivation is low. Maybe you want to practice and get better, but don't seem to get around to it. Maybe you're putting off your big project and just doodling around instead. There's a pretty simple idea to get these things done that might actually work if we put enough things in place for you to succeed. Likely, if you're watching this, it's pretty clear to you how important doing this is to you. It's just that your reality hasn't quite lined up with that yet. So I've spent a lot of time reading productivity books and obsessing over how to get all things creative that I want to done. I learned pretty late in life that what I was personally experiencing is ADHD. Now, whether you deal with that or not, this video is going to help you chip away at those art goals of yours. There's one consistent problem with all three of these scenarios, whether it's improvement, creativity, or projects, and it's consistency. Now, before you think you hear me say draw every day, remember that I've gone through the arc of saying you better draw every day and then retracting that advice saying it's not necessary for everyone always and there's nuance. You can go watch that or rewatch that. I haven't changed my mind. Now, the solution here might not be draw every day, but it might be draw every weekday or it might be draw every Tuesday and Wednesday. Let me back it up to what we're actually talking about here. One of the most damaging perceptions of creativity is how spontaneous it is. Spontaneous like in that famous movie about the creation of YouTube where the creator's with his friend who's like, I'm tired of TV, just staring at the tube. I wish there was a tube about me. And the creator's like, wait, what did you just say? Yeah, that has a nice ring to it. All right, that actually that part's later. He, he goes, wait, what did you just say? A me tube? And then there's violin music swelling and there's papers flying around and the camera's swirling around the Sistine Chapel and voila, he made YouTube. I, I know it wasn't one guy that made YouTube. Um, Jesse Eisenberg, played, anyway. You can wait on that burst of sudden inspiration, the muse, whatever you want to call it, and live out the spontaneous manic pixie artist life, but you'll likely find that despite what it looks like, creativity doesn't come from out of thin air. Neither does the time to improve your work or the time to actually finish your work. On the back end of creativity, just like sleep, there are gears turning that eventually result in new ideas and motivation, just like the digestion of food converting into energy, not energy arriving out of nowhere. Now, the good thing about this is that we can hack it. We can make it work for us. And the best way to do that isn't to wait around for it to strike. After all, creative professionals can't just wait around to meet a deadline of creative work that needs to be done. The best way to make it work for us is consistency. Just like regular fitness makes us healthy and apathy and lethargy makes us unhealthy, repeated habits are what allow us to be consistently creative. Now that might sound too simple, but it's not. Because there are several strategies that we need to employ, especially depending on who we are and our circumstances, to really make this work. I've been working through the advice in this video for a few months now, and I have to say that it's radically improved my own creative practice. So I'll show you how I got there. Now, first of all, whether this is something you're going to be able to do two days a week or five days a week, it should be consistent. So instead of work on art being this item on your to-do list, it should be at a scheduled time that we have available. So I know that everyone's life is difficult and stressful and jam-packed. Some of you are working 80 some hours a week. And unfortunately, my morning-centric advice probably doesn't work for the kids that have to get up for school at 5 a.m. But there has to be a small amount of time you can eke out each week at a consistent time. And since this is so important to you, hopefully you'll be able to hold this time sacred. So here's some hard science for you. Our willpower is at its strongest when we get up in the morning, and it slowly gets weaker throughout the day. Could your circumstances allow for you to still get a good night's sleep and set aside anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours in the morning for this creative practice? There's a ton of benefits to doing this in the morning, and it actually is kind of luxurious to have the first time that you spend in the day on what you want to do. But if you can't manage that, still keep it scheduled. We do want to account for rest. I don't think you, that you should start a habit seven days a week only to eventually burn out on it a few days from now. If, for instance, you're able to maintain this every weekday morning, five days a week, take the weekends off. Understand that this video is not about digging deep to get that extra hustle grind set. This is like, imagine the mole from Wind in the Willows wearing his little British clothing, sipping his little cup of tea, and working on his art for an hour. The outcome of this is a sustainable, enjoyable habit, not another way for you to burn the candle at both ends. 
If anything, this should help prevent those caustic, spontaneous, and unreliable creative bursts that can't seem to show up when you really need them. Part of the reason that we want this time to be scheduled is so that it becomes ritualistic. Once we learn and establish a habit, we use so much less brain power forcing ourselves to do it, and it comes to us naturally. It actually becomes wind in the willows, mole, quaint, and enjoyable because you become used to it. So here's what I've been doing for the last few months. First thing in the morning, I get dressed with work clothes on. I try to avoid sweatpants. Seriously, the last time I wore sweatpants during the day, I got nothing done. That's for working out and relaxing later. I make a cup of coffee and I sit in this big yoga bow chair and read. A book, not social media. In fact, I try to avoid that until at least 12 o'clock. I spend some time contemplating, meditating. I take any supplements that I need to. I stretch, I do a few push-ups, and I start typing in a notes document meant for brain dumping. It's almost incoherent. It's just logging whatever I have on my mind to get it off of my mind. Sometimes I get good ideas for new things, but most of the time it just helps me to reconcile and figure out any of those extra processes that have been running in the background of my mind. With all of that done, I've performed the ritual the things I always do to prime myself so that the next thing can happen. I put on some nice, focusable music, and I spend an hour on drawing practice. This includes warming up, tackling a subject matter or area of drawing that I need to work on, or working on a study that will help me understand art better. After that hour is up, I take 15 minutes to do whatever. It's a break. Do the wordle or the hurdle or reply to something stupid in Discord, or send Mark the news that there is rapid and severe economic inflation in LEGO City. But I won't check the actual news because it's not 12 yet. After that 15 minutes is up, I spend at least an hour working on Stormfellers, my animated pilot that I've been sharing pieces of over on Patreon. I work on character models or rigs or textures, backgrounds, block out scenes, animate, re-storyboard part of an animatic, whatever needs to be done. After another 15 minute break following that, I can accomplish any other tasks that I have on the agenda. Maybe it's freelance work, maybe it's work on a video, maybe it's a trading card illustration, maybe it's student critiques. Whatever the day ends up looking like, I've gotten the things that are most important to me done first. So let's back up on some of this and make the game plan for you. Not only do I have a set of things that I do each morning in preparation for these two hour long sessions, at no point am I deciding what I'm going to do during them as I'm doing them. Instead, the day before or earlier in the week or Sunday night, I've already set out a list of what needs to be worked on. The great thing about this is that it takes away the pressure of what I'm going to work on since it's already been decided for me by previous me. I just have to get started on it. Sometimes these hour sessions don't go as hot as I hoped for. The important thing though is that I did them. Another thing, one of these hours is for practice and the other is for accomplishing a creative project. I was finding that when I wanted to work on Stormfellers, there were other more pressing things to do. So I'd put it off until I could spend a full day on it. And by that time, it had been so long since I worked on it that I needed to completely refresh my understanding and get back up to speed. Now, since this is being primarily made in Blender, it's easy to forget how a part of the program works or how a specific process is done. By having an hour every day, I'm always making consistent progress every day and every week. So how do we make this work for you? Well, today, the day that you're watching this video, don't do anything. Instead, make a plan of what's most important to you, what things you want to work on, when you're going to do them, and how your ritual is going to look. Is there a specific place that this can be done with a certain beverage, music, set of tools, even kind of clothing you wear? Over time, all these things are going to signal to your brain that it's that time again, time to kick it into gear. As for tomorrow or the first day that you're doing this, do everything that you plan to do to get ready and then expect nothing. Maybe you're a little sleepy because you got up earlier than normal. Maybe all you make is two lines on the page and they look terrible. Don't panic about that. All you're doing is starting to create this habit. Set a timer for the amount of time that you planned on doing this, either on your phone, or I recommend one of these little guys from Amazon that I'll link below. Once the timer is up, you're done. You probably can't concentrate any longer than the timer anyhow, but either way, we don't want you to be too exhausted for the next day that you're doing this. Then go about your day and have a little bit of time for rest. If your planned time is in the morning, set your clothes out, make sure there's water in the coffee pot, give your work area a nice little cleanup. It goes a long way. 
Figure out what you're going to do during your time tomorrow. If you're struggling with creativity or having good ideas, choose something anyway, no matter how dumb it seems, and see what you get out of it as a jumping off point. Books like Tiny Habits, Atomic Habits, and Essentialism back up the idea behind this, and there's social proof that many of the most successful creative people had processes just like this. Henry Matisse said, don't wait for inspiration, it comes while working. Instead of leaving creativity up to chance, it makes so much more sense to have systems in place. Especially if you're struggling with motivation and inspiration, creating these habits will, over time, pull the bumpers up on the bowling alley and guarantee that you're gonna start hitting some pins. For me, this has worked so well that I've noticed even another need that I have. In the actual production of these videos, all too often I'm abruptly confronted with the fact that a new one is due, and instead of waiting around for the inspiration for a new video to hit when I need it to, I should implement a system proactively where I spend a scheduled amount of time working on the next video long before I need to get it out. I think the results will be better for everyone, so we'll see how that goes. There are so many negative feelings of panic, frustration, inadequacy, and even worthlessness that come along with coming up short creatively. Creating habits in a diligent way like this does so much to quell those feelings. We're getting rid of the inconsistency, and we're also getting rid of the need to suddenly get better or get the thing done. Instead, every day or week, you're going to get a little bit closer to your goals, and that's all you need to know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if this is a system you're interested in, and especially if you implement it, I'd love to hear what your results are. Even if it feels like this isn't necessary or something that could help you now, I'd love for you to come back and try and use it in the future if you're struggling. And if you're trying to practice, but you need something to guide you during this scheduled focus time, there's always the Learn Character Design course. There's 18 hours of drawing and design learning in there at learncharacterdesign.com. Grab Biko's backpack and even a personalized video critique over on Patreon. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.